to Inspired Overflow. I'm your host, Casey Star Triplet, and I am so happy that you have joined us for today's broadcast. If this is your first time listening to Inspired Overflow, I want to welcome you. Inspired Overflow is designed to really serve as a platform for Christ, and we want to encourage you and inspire you to have your best life with God. And so today's show is really no different. It's all about equipping the members of the body of Christ so you can live your best life with God. And our topic today is called Tips and Tools for Women in Ministry. According to a survey conducted by the Barna Group, one in 10 churches in the United States are led by a woman. And y'all, this is double from where we were over 15 years ago. We still live in a culture where many faiths are dominated by men in leadership. However, if this trend continues, more and more women will rise as apostles, pastors, bishops, evangelists, and ministers. So today's show, which is called Tips and Tools for Women in Ministry, it may sound gender specific, but I'm telling you, this show really is for everyone. So I want to send a shout out to all the men who are listening to today's program. I believe that God is going to download or drop a woman in your spirit, amen, that you are connected to. And the Lord wants you to listen to this show so you can understand really kind of what the experience is like for a woman who's called to preach. More than likely, if you are in a position of leadership, you may have had to help train or work alongside a woman who's been called into ministry. And it's important for all of us to feel equipped and prepared when it comes to advancing the kingdom of Christ. So that's why we're doing this show. We have seasoned women, seasoned pastors who are here to share their experiences on what it's like being a woman in ministry. We're also opening up our phone lines because we want to hear from you. If you are a woman in ministry, if you've been called to minister just yesterday, amen, or if you've been ministering for 20 years and you still need that support, you still have questions, our guests are here to answer your questions. So the phone lines are open. The number is 314-969-6900. And so I want to introduce our guest uh, with me in the studio today is Pastor Watts. Now, Pastor Watts, she has been uh, in ministry for over 30 years. Y'all, she doesn't look like it. Um, But Pastor Joyce Watts is the pastor of Liberty Worship Center here in St. Louis. She's married, and her husband is actually here in the studio with her, just uh, providing some moral support. Amen. Amen. And Pastor Watts is also uh, the mother of two children who are also in ministry as well. So, Pastor Watts, thank you so much for joining us here on Inspired Overflow. You're welcome. We're also joined by Dr. Venus McCoy. Dr. McCoy is over the ministry Eagle Eye Ministries, which is based in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. McCoy has written a book called 21 Wisdom Pearls, which is a handbook for women in ministry. And I'm telling you all, this this book has really just blessed my life. I mean, this book covers a wide range of topics, and we're going to cover some of those topics today on the Inspired Overflow radio show. But at this time, let us welcome Dr. Venice McCoy. Welcome, Dr. McCoy, to the Inspired Overflow radio show. Thanks so much for having me. We're excited about having you join us here, Dr. McCoy. So, Pastor Watts, I want to start off with you. I mean, today we're talking about tools and tips for women in ministry, and you were actually called to preach at the age of 16. Yes. So I mentioned um, earlier that you've been in ministry for over 30 years, so our listeners, they can do the math. Amen. So you've been, you're seasoned. Uh, you've been in ministry for a while, but just tell us a little bit about uh, the life of Joyce Watts being called to preach at the age of 16. 16 is young. Mm-hmm. You just got your driver's license. Yes. Tell us about um, your experience being called to preach at such a young age. Um, and being a young woman then, um, being called, it was um, um, it wasn't difficult. My pastor, which um, at that time I was uh, a member of Mount Rose Missionary Baptist Church, and it wasn't popular then. But he was a pastor who um, was filled with the Holy Ghost, and when we told him as females that we were called to preach, um, he did not push us away or deny it, even though he had to come up against some of the other pastors. And so um, 
he encouraged us. He gave us the opportunity. And um, actually, my first message that I preached was, do you really know Jesus? And um, because I was passionate about really knowing who this Jesus was at 16. And um, so when preaching that, he put put me in the pulpit on a Sunday morning actually. And I actually preached it to um, the whole church and people, someone, one of our members were even in a hot, was it even in the hospital at that time? And she needed a touch from the Lord. And she, they brought the telephone into the church and took the phone off the hook. And I tell you, she was out of there shortly after that. But that was my um, experience. We had a, it's good to have encouraging um, leaders with you as you're going along, you know, and so it is difficult when you have someone that's not as supportive, in which I can explain a little bit later about that, you know, because everybody's not going to go for the women preacher. Amen. Uh, You know, Dr. McCoy, Pastor Watts talked about uh, being called to preach at the age of 16. And um, her pastor opened up the pulpit for her on a Sunday morning to preach to the church, which is really unusual. You find a lot of ministers, you know, you might preach on a Wednesday night or a Friday night or something like that. But he opened up the, the pulpit for Pastor Watts to preach at the age of 16. I'm curious because, Dr. McCoy, you've written this book called 21 Wisdom Pearls, a, a guidebook, a handbook for women in ministry. Why did God put on your heart to write this handbook for women ministers? Um, I I wrote the book, Tishi, because um, a lot of, I made what I call a lot of elementary elementary blunders. Um, And when I say that, uh, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have anyone to uh, hold my hand and walk me through that process uh, in my early years, as Pastor Watts did. And I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, especially when I would go in and out of ministries because I I lacked the training. I had the word. I had the anointing. I had the gift. But there were some natural things, and that's what the book is really about. It deals more with natural um, equipping than spiritual. Um, And I, I saw women making the same mistakes that I made, and it was evident that they did not have guidance or didn't have a mentor. And God just spoke to me and said, please sit in the book, please something, uh, your experiences that, that you've gone through so that women do not continue to make the same mistakes. You know, and um, the Lord really did speak through, uh, through you through that book because um, I came across the book. I know you were posting about the book on Facebook. And again, the book is called 21 Wisdom Pearls. It's written by Dr. Uh, Venus McCoy. Um, but the book came at a really good time in my life. I had just accepted my call to preach. And the book covers the book covers such a, a wide vast uh, of topics that all female ministers, I think, really need to understand. I want to pitch um, the first question, though, to you, Dr. McCoy, because you didn't have a spiritual mentor or someone to help you avoid those elementary blunders that you talked about. Who did you go to for advice? I prayed. <laughs> I did a lot of praying. Um, for about three years, I had a spiritual mother, uh, but because she traveled a lot, we were not as connected as I needed to be. Uh, whenever I could attend her meetings, I would just, I would attend and I would sit and I would watch and I would observe her. But um, I, I did a lot of praying, and if I can say that God mentored me, uh, the Holy Spirit would just answer because I, I would try to understand, you know, uh, what happened, what went wrong after an engagement, and so I would do a lot of praying, and a lot of what I have placed in the book is a result of prayer, is a result of my experiences. Uh, one of the other reasons, Casey, that I wrote the book is uh, because as I started traveling more uh, over the last 15 years, I had women asking me, they saw uh, that the excellence that God had brought me into had birthed out of me, um, and they wanted to know how can I walk in excellence, how can I walk um, in, if I can say it like this, in in the anointing, um, but be uh, accurate at the same time. And I really could not, it's impossible to mentor that many people, so I also, that's another reason that I wrote the book. 
Amen. Amen. Pastor uh, Watts, you know, Dr. McCoy, she does a lot of traveling. She she hosts conferences and she's going to talk about a conference that she is hosting um, in Dallas, Texas later this year. Um, but I'm, I'm curious and I want to ask you this question. Um, you have your husband here with you. Um, you guys have been married for many years. You have two children. But what I'm encountering with even myself and a lot of other ministers is how do you even deal or how did you even deal as a woman minister with the whole dating and trying to have a social life? You were called to minister at the age of 16. How did you balance serving the Lord, but also, you know, having a, a, a I won't say quality of life, but a, a, a quality social life as well? Okay. Um, good question. Excellent question. And um, what I did was um, I prayed and fast a lot back then, um, even more. Um, and I was careful. The Lord always kept it in my mind to be careful of who I um, liked or who I wanted to ment- uh, mentor me or who I wanted to um, bring into my circle or who I wanted to admire. And so my admiration did not come from um if you will, you can find all types in the church. You can find the loose woman. You can find the wealthy woman. You can find all types of natu- you know, naturally so of how you, who you admire. And so the Lord always would tell me, you know, um, when I would go around and go to the different conferences, um, who to admire or, or who to really pattern myself after. And so I was very careful with that. And so at 16 and um, going along um, my social life, that came up even with my um, friends. Um, I had some friends that really just didn't want to dedicate their lives to the Lord. They still wanted to do worldly things or what have you. Um, And so I would pull myself back from them. I didn't want to lose my friends. Um, And I was still in school at the age of 16. And I had to even bag off some of those friends. Some of those friends were busy smoking marijuana. Some of those friends were going around, you know, they were very sexual or what have you, you know. And so I didn't think I was oh so strong where I couldn't be tempted and fall to that. I knew I could. The temptation was great. But as I studied the word of God and found that that was displeasing to God, and as I was led by the Holy Ghost, then I had to change my friends. You know, uh, Dr. McCoy, uh, Pastor Watts has shared her experience about, you know, being such a a young woman called to preach. I know that um, you, with your heavy schedule, you you travel around the world preaching. Um, You're not married yet at this point in your life. I'm just curious, can you share, how do you deal with, uh, you know, dating um, as a, as a woman with a, an apostolic anointing, uh, hosting these conferences, writing these books, pastoring a church um, in Chicago, Illinois? You know, I like what Pastor Watts said. I, I really like what she said. One of the key things is that you really do have to be careful who you have in your circle. Um, that's the, the first place that I start, Casey. You, you have to be careful who you surround yourself with and who um, you even fellowship with. Uh, a friend of mine said some years ago, and I think I talk about it in the book, um, that everybody cannot handle your humanness. So, you know, the, the human side of you. Most of the time, uh, my social life is with my family. Um, as far as dating, um, I am very careful even when it comes to dating. I, I, my perspective on dating is that dating is designed to lead eventually to marriage. I know that people have different uh, reasons for dating, but dating is not supposed to be just, you know, to keep company, just hang out. But I believe that dating uh, really is courtship. It, it should be to lead to marriage. And when you understand the purpose of God in your life, you will understand uh, the person that will ask you out on a date. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, it's, it's been a few years ago. A pastor came to our church, and, and uh, someone uh, with him asked my mother, said to my mother, um, I'm interested in your daughter, and uh, I, I just wonder, you know, if, if what would happen if we get together. My mom said to him, uh, well, can you handle the anointing on her life? Well, he never approached me. (laughs) So I guess that answered his question. Sometimes um, you just have to understand whether that person uh, is compatible with you, not only in the natural, but but in the spirit realm as well. 
And one of the things that I'm clear about is the call of God on my life. I'm clear about uh, where God uh, has me positioned now and where he's taking me. And I'm clear about if the person who approaches me is able to um, handle that as well. Amen. And I think that's a really good point, Um, especially, you know, as women ministers, you have to be comfortable with who God has called you to be. Amen. And understanding and trusting God in that call and believing that he will send you. Amen. That mate that he has designed just for you.